<laughs> it's the Sugar Show. Today it's all about bringing your dog to the Caribbean. Should you do it? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, you should. There's going to be another companion video where we talk about how sugar has changed our plans for this season because we have done some radical shifts. We were heading south, then going north, and then maybe changing the destination going north. So that's in a separate video, either linked or maybe uploaded yesterday or tomorrow. Well, anyway, somewhere on our channel, you'll find it. The good, bad, and the ugly. Should we start with the good or the bad first? The good. The good, of course. I think in 14 years of Sugar's life, or nearly 14 years, we've only been away from her for more than a couple hours a handful of times. Yeah, She's our companion and we love being around Sugar. It's nice to have some sort of stress relief. When things are tough, I don't know, the conditions are bumpy, there's thunderstorms coming through, or you're offshore and you're stressed out about something, it's nice to have something to focus on. Yeah, and she loves having all of our attention at all times, so it is a great distraction. And she's always, you know, making us happy, no matter what. It's also really fun to meet other dog owners and you know, play on the beach together, go on little excursions together. It, we can tell that Sugar really loves it. Yeah. Our good friends on the Monohull, and they have a great Dane. It's amazing. It's amazing. Probably Pluto, you are awesome. Yeah, totally awesome. We got other friends with a very small dog, a little lap dog, and I can't remember the name of the breed, but their dog will not go to the bathroom on their catamaran. Oh yeah, ginger. And that's a real <laughs> challenge to go to shore so often so the dog can find some relief. Ah, oh, the number one sugar question. Where does she go to the bathroom? <laughs> she pees and poops on the back porch. The, the bow of the boat, the trampoline on this catamaran. She just goes up there, does her business, and... It's nice. She usually goes in the center, same spot. So we clean it up really quick, and it's, uh, it's perfect. Yeah, it doesn't get funky at all. Um, if there's one downside to it, though, is that sugars are maybe a little too confident, so we could be offshore middle of the night. And you see her getting up from the cockpit and going up to the bow, which is bouncing up and down. She's just out there doing her thing. I guess you gotta go, you gotta go. Um, on our last boat, which was a monohull, we had astroturf, we had fake grass. That worked pretty good. Her aim wasn't very good, so she would see the grass and know what to do, but she would miss it. Mostly, it's just wonderful having a dog on board. Uh, I didn't write it down here, but Security. I mean, my goodness, people online are talking all about, do you need a gun on board, you know, piracy, all that stuff. If you're worried about, get a, a large size, scary looking dog. Yeah. I mean, that's going to scare away any intruder. She loves to just go out and look around if she hears something, if someone's coming up, you know, her first instinct is to bark. We just leave the boat open. If we're away from the boat for an hour or two and Sugar's on board, Sugar is going to tell them hey no go find another boat yeah most people think she's a pit bull so. yeah she's not she's half american bulldog <laughs> half lab all right it's not all fun and games with the dog and there are some really really big downsides people should consider uh, before bringing their pet with them on a cruise so let's talk about those we do feel very tied to the boat, especially at her her age. But I think whatever age, you don't want to leave your dog on a boat for hours and hours and hours on end. You know, some people want to go cruising or go for a hike all day. We could never do that. I mean, maybe two or three hours max, but we're always feeling like we need to either bring sugar or get back and check on her. Absolutely. And the folks who do take their dog on shore to go do a hike or whatever, you gotta keep in mind, a lot of these third world countries, the dogs do not have the health care that our dog has, that your dog probably has. And these dogs definitely have mange, they have got fleas, ticks, uh, and some of them can be really territorial. It can be spooky walking through yeah. the streets of Mexico or yeah. just any of these Caribbean islands. And local dogs, they do not like to see the, uh, the outsider dog coming through. So yeah, because of those things, you feel tied to the boat a lot. Oh my God, the paperwork, the pa how much money do you I, think I, went I, into those papers? I mean, I wish I could say, and I probably could <laughs> figure it out, but I'm a little scared too. It's gotta be, I just had to guess, $1,500. Yeah, cruising in the States, of course, is no big deal, but yeah. if you wanna go to the Caribbean, there's a lot of hoops to jump through to be 
legal. We'll talk about being legal or not, though, after you get into the specifics of the paperwork hoops in the Caribbean. So when we flew into St. Martin two and a half years ago, I knew that we're going to walk through an airport. We better follow exactly to the T what St. Martin needs because otherwise they're going to potentially put us back on a plane. St. Martin is a great example of one of the hardest countries to get into. And I learned that at the last second as I was trying to get all of the you know T's crossed. So I realized I had a missing piece of information, which is the USDA certified veterinarian stamp. I'll show it to you. You can barely see it. It's embossed here. Is that what you call it <laughs> when it's yeah raised? So I literally had to drive two hours each way in a snowstorm to Olympia, Washington to get that stamp. And they wouldn't even give it to me the day of. They had to FedEx it to me. The punchline is nobody cares. Yeah, so we even Nobody got... cares. You get off that airplane, the customs room is just an empty white room. Nobody is even checking. Yeah, we, we was, got boarded by the Navy even. Yeah, so they showed up, eight of them, and they're very friendly, and they yeah. looked at everything in the boat. And I said, do you want to see my pet paperwork? And they said, no. <laughs> I said, are you sure? Because I went through a lot of work to get it. And they're like, no, no, no problem. We, we trust you. Yeah, right. So I'm telling you, I never hear of anybody, aside from the Turks and Caicos, really you know being stringent with these laws it's a, almost as if they don't know what they are or they're truly intended for people immigrating to these countries and living there with their pets right. but for cruisers you're in and out yep yep a lot of it comes down to the attitude you bring because if you go online you go to all these websites and you follow all of the rules at the end of the day let's say that you missed a step you skipped a step we did and yeah. we did uh, the Dominican Republic is a really good example of it. it's a if you look at what they require online it is one of the tougher countries to get into we showed up because we got diverted by weather without that That's paperwork a good excuse too <laughs> and did they even look at us sideways no they didn't care at all so it, it you know if you showed up with a really entitled attitude where you know, I didn't know that I had to have this paperwork and it they're gonna push back against you. Yeah, or if your dog does hurt somebody, yeah, person or other animal, then they're gonna wanna see your paperwork. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so at the end of the day, I think it's really up to the owner, depending on what kind of dog they've got and how comfortable they are. But we have met cruisers who don't follow any of the formalities with the import uh, importation of their dog and have never ever had a problem in years. And then you've got folks like us who try and cross all the T's and dot all the I's and nobody seems to care. My favorite was coming up through Puerto Rico and we were headed to the Bahamas. <laughs> and the Bahamas say you've got to have a vet, you know, update the health certificate within seven days, 10 days. So here we are in Puerto Rico and we thought, well, we need to get some, you know, other stuff like maybe some more food or something. So we thought, oh, we'll just have the vet give us an updated international health certificate. I'm not kidding you. It took him three hours. He was so stressed out. He was trying to call like the ministry. The vet, right? Yeah. yeah. He, he wouldn't just give us an updated health certificate that just says she's fine. All he had to do was sign his yes, name. in one little place. So when we got to the Bahamas, <laughs> I don't know. She, the lady was like eating her lunch while she's like stamping the. Yeah. She didn't care. Yeah. So. I think you do have to show that you have gone through some effort to, you know, you show you've got the vaccines. Maybe you even tried to print their specific form. And I don't know. I think that we'll have everything listed in the description of the helpful links and, you know, for the Bahamas, who to contact if you want to have somebody Bahamian help you. Uh, ahead of coming because they do require an, an import permit. Yeah, and we've got little tips and hints like the guy in the BVI's again one of those really hard countries to get into. He showed up. What do you say about sugar? Oh, she <laughs> he says cosmopolitan. <laughs> yeah. Devo, we love you. Yeah, yeah, he's the vet in yeah. uh, Tortola. 
Anyway, why don't I turn it over to you and you can just get really specific about all these countries and we're gonna fly around on a map and tell you which one's hard and which one's easy. How's that sound? Sounds good. I know looking at all of these requirements can be really overwhelming. So I've broken it down into three categories. The first one is easy. So you need to get vaccinations, you know that. And some of them will require a specific country uh, import or health certificate. That's easy. The next category is challenging. And that will include, you know, additional things like they want to see proof that they have tick and tapeworm and heartworm or some variation of something on what we covered in the easy category. The third category is difficult. And that could be with a titer test, quarantine, a breed restriction, that kind of thing. So let's take a little tour through the Caribbean as it relates to cruising with dogs. Bahamas, I'd say they're pretty easy. You just got to get that pet permit and you're good to go. Turks and Caicos, we heard they're challenging. They come on board. They don't like certain breeds, bulldogs being one of them. Dominican Republic, they do require quite a bit. Luckily we had it, so they didn't seem to be too high strung about it. Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, they're easy. I mean, you're pretty much in the U.S., so that feels good. British Virgin Islands, now, they are for sure difficult. And if you follow all their requirements, you're getting a tighter test and you're talking to Debo. The Leeward Islands are mostly Dutch and French. and They have lots of requirements, but they seem to be pretty relaxed about it. And that's the same with the Windwards. Except for Grenada, they're pretty easy. The ABC Islands, they're Dutch, so they're pretty easy, even though their requirements are pretty challenging. Jamaica, don't even try to think about getting your dog off the boat. Caymans, difficult as well. Mexico, pretty easy. Belize, a little more challenging. Guatemala, easy. And Panama, easy. So that's a high level look at the Caribbean. You're going to find all the specifics on the website I have listed in the description at PetTravel.com. So it's an excellent resource with all the up-to-date requirements. At the end of the day, it's totally up to you. It's a personal decision on how much rigmarole you want to go through. So Nick, what would you do next time with the, <laughs> knowing everything you know? Well, I can't imagine cruising without Sugar. I mean, she's such a part of our, our family. Um, we have a, we can't even talk about when sugar is, is gone. We use kind of a code word, which is when sugar goes off to college, uh, because we don't even like to talk about when she's no longer part of the crew. But uh, it's really hard to imagine cruising without her. But just listening to you go through all the requirements for all the different countries and knowing you know, how restrictive it is. Oh, the medication. Sugar has progressed from a special prescription food to now a cocktail of drugs to help her feel okay. Uh, she's almost 14. She's got a lot of arthritis pain issues and I gotta say that if Sugar was not a part of our life, not part of our crew, I certainly wouldn't get a dog <laughs> to go cruising with. That's I, a good point. It's just it's so much extra work and cruising by itself hard enough yeah so i would say if you have a dog and you want to go cruising don't let the dog stop you yeah absolutely it's, they're they're going to add so much to your cruise absolutely and then i would say with the paperwork it's just whatever you feel comfortable with i think you do need a, a certain set of vaccinations and a really sunny disposition will get you a long ways. And I think it's safe to say, hey, you didn't know that there were certain requirements because it is a little gray. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I think if you've got a dog on board, you are gonna spend a lot of time on your boat or at the beach. And I think you're gonna say goodbye to a lot of the opportunities for interacting with people on land and doing land travel. So if you know that going in and you're okay with that balance, which we certainly are, Go for it. Yeah. That's the sugar show. <laughs> There's going to be a companion video to this one, and I don't know if it's going to come out uh, today or tomorrow or something like that. It's kind of an update on our plans because sugar is 
almost 14 years old and she's still doing good for the most part but her health is in decline and so our plans have really radically changed here in the last several weeks weeks and um, well we may be even changing plans again um, so we're gonna talk more about that in the video and, and maybe a little bit more of a sugar origin story Woo! it is windy thank you guys so much for watching yeah, all the way to the you. end we love seeing your comments thank you so much for subscribing we have a special thing to offer you since you made it all the way to the end of the video you can join our secret podcast yeah we get so long-winded sometimes we can't put it into the video so we thought we'd just have a little extra conversation to finish off the week you and go, you can you can also participate in it too if you want to call in or send questions just like an offline conversation yeah yeah it's our exclusive little group so you just go to the link that you find in the top of the description you click on that you put in your email address don't worry about it we're not gonna sell it to anybody nothing never, like that never. no way and you'll receive a link to the super secret podcast tentatively titled uh, under the sheets with the O'Kellys <laughs> under the sheets or something like that yeah we did our first one today so <laughs> yeah. I think you're gonna enjoy it tell us what you think all right take care and we'll see you soon there's more videos coming up get sugar peen <laughs> Oh!